now we want to start with the second part of the morning that is going to be the panel discussion. The panel discussion is going to be about the role of open source in innovation and I want to be, do a very brief uh, intro about why open source. We consider that open source is the innovation engine of the industry. If, for those of you, by the way, who do you know about open source? Raise your hands. You know about open source. Probably most of you know about open source. Open source, for those of you that you don't know, it's about a million projects of software with two over 200 million repositories that contributes, receive contributions for about 83 million developers all over the world. And that means that a lot of people, a lot of companies are using these open source technologies to create their own products. Starting with Red Hat, this is the role of open source in the overall Red Hat portfolio. This is how we create products. We start with those open source projects and out of those, we create our own projects. Red Hat Enterprise Linux is coming from Fedora. So it's not only us investing on that and creating the new features of the products. It's also the community bringing what they consider are more relevant new features to bring out of Enterprise Linux. In fact, it's not only the major products like OpenShift or RHEL, but also the whole developer tools that we will see during the day are coming also from open source projects. We have here Mithun, that is the VP of developer relations that is responsible of a lot of these products, starting with that open source. So we would like to understand how we start, how we prioritize those open source. And then with that, I want to invite you, because this is not only about Mithun and us, how do we do the job, but also we want to invite some members that are also contributors. And so, is ready? Yep, perfect. So I would like to invite, please, Subin, that is the SVP of Head of Architecture and Engineering and HDFC Bank. Please, Subin. Uh, Saran, that is the Deputy for Federal Bank, please. Uh, Kiran, that is the AVP of Infosys, please. Yep, you take a seat there. Yep, here. No, yep, perfect. I stay here, perfect. Uh, then we would like to invite Sadri, that is the SVP, Chief Architect for Tata, and then of course Mithun, that is the VP of Developer Tools. Okay? First of all, I would like to start with, we want to talk a bit about open source in general, but obviously focus on how they use uh, the open source projects in their companies. So I would like to start with a very basic understanding of, please, how do you use open source in your company? Also a bit of background in case you have, beyond how you are using today open source in your current company and how open source is important for you overall. So we can start, whoever prefer to kick off, maybe Mithun, you can kick off because you are <laughs> responsible of the tools. Sure, I'll, I'll uh, do a quick intro of myself and talk about it. Uh, as Ignacio was saying, I lead the developer business unit uh, within Red Hat. At Red Hat, for us, you know, we, we had several facts thrown by Burr, Ignacio, everyone, right? Like open source is the heart of everything that we do. So the developer uh, tools uh, journey you saw, the products that we build, everything is based on open source for us. Uh, as uh, uh, you were telling Ignacio, we invest over a billion dollars, or, or Burr, I think you were telling that fact. Uh, over a billion dollars, uh, we invest in upstream projects every year. Um, that's 8,300 crores uh, in today's money. So that's a lot of money that we invest. And, you know, uh, for us, open source is uh, the first strategy that we deploy. Everything that we do, we also contribute upstream as well. And together, we want to make this better. And, and that's, uh, that's our way. So let me introduce myself. I'm Zubin. So I have 20 years experience. And I've been a developer all my life. And now I'm an architect. Okay. So I've grown up. The one looking into the growth direction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I've been fortunate enough to work in open source right from the beginning. As a fresher, I was a part of the Apache HTTPD project where I worked with the developers. So I have a mindset of how the whole open source community works. In the bank, we are moving to an open source. We are a bank, so you know, we are not like too open to open source. We are gradually moving towards open source. We are building our digital journeys on open source. We are looking at API orchestration, resilience, so those kind of frameworks we are looking at. And we are trying to migrate uh, or, no, legacy applications into cloud native applications. So that's one of the whole stack we are trying to build using open source. And on the database perspective, we are looking at Postgres very seriously as our you know, go-to database for all our cloud applications. High, not a high level, this is what we're doing. We'll go into details later. Yeah, I'm from uh, Federal Bank. 
I think I am uh, in the industry for 24 years. Now also I will do the programming with the Spring Boot and uh, all microservice development also. So if you see the Federal Bank website, uh, that is uh, LifeRay portal. LifeRay is a commercial open source. Usually we will start with open source tag and uh, when it is moved to the production, usually we will uh, buy the support license, commercial open source license because we require a support when you're running in the production critical environment and all. So we'll use the supported uh, open source, commercial open source. The library is a classic example. If you go to www.federbank.co.in, it's uh, Java portal, uh, web content management system. I start with uh, commercial open source yearly subscription license. If you see other product also, internally, if you use DevOps, pipeline, everything will uh, use o open sources. but. In the production, we'll use uh, licensed commercial open source. Perfect. Thank you. Kiran? Yeah, good morning to all. Uh, myself, Kiran. Uh, I come from the IT infrastructure support team from Infosys. Uh, my career started with the programming and then moved on to the uh, infrastructure support. Uh, I have experience uh, on both the worlds, that is the uh, enterprise uh, uh, proprietary products as well as the open source. So basically, we take care of uh, the de development, testing, POC uh, 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 management. We use a lot of uh, uh, proprietary products as well as open source. So I have the experience on both the, uh, both the sites, be it a database, be it an application. We enable our developers to ensure that they deliver to our customers. So we have a, uh, a I mean, series of uh, uh, open source products as well. And we have a unit who does the uh, open source uh, for the community edition as well as uh, the contribution. And we do a lot of uh, open source, be it a container, be it a Kubernetes cluster, or be it an application on the JBoss or anything. We do a lot because we're an enterprise who support the customers across the globe. And uh, Sadri. Yeah, hi, good morning all. Uh, I represent Tata Play. Uh, while most of the panelists uh, knows how to count money, they come from a finance background. Uh, we come from an entertainment background. So our only job is to uh, keep our users uh, happy uh, apart from uh, the accounting the money. So I would like to start with giving some business perspectives. Uh, uh, say a Tata Play, uh, meaning we always go after one metric uh, called uh, cost per transaction. Um, so we strongly believe that our cost per transaction has to be very low, uh, which would actually make us more competitive. Uh, the reason is we are one of the few uh, regulated bodies which government decides the price of the channels that you watch. Um, so, and uh, unfortunately, uh, meaning from 2019 onwards, we were not allowed to increase the price. So, uh, if you look at, uh, meaning in between the inflation has soared by 40%, okay, so our cost is kind of constant, uh, but it has kind of, uh, meaning our revenues are constant, but we are under constant margin pressure to kind of deliver more to our customers. Um, just to give you a few examples, uh, tomorrow uh, there is an India-England match. See, and India is a very cricket-crazy country. And just like in this room where most of the people prefer to sit back, uh, like that most of our customers actually wake up at around tomorrow 12.30 or 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And they kind of uh, come to our platform and try to add a package uh, to watch the match. And uh, if by some means, okay, we are not able to honor this transaction, and if they know that, uh, meaning I'm the guy behind the scenes, meaning I will not be allowed to leave my home. So it is as critical as that. Um, and at Tata Play, right, okay, we build a kind of a stadium for every match where there are millions of users who come and um, sit and watch the match. And the biggest problem for us is all those users go back once the match is over. And this repeats for every match. Okay, and... Uh, meaning tomorrow is going to be a big day for us and hopefully India will qualify for uh, the finals. And Sunday, if we have an epic clash, then that is like a brutal thing for us. <laughs> While there are millions of people okay, who would like to watch the match, uh, but we at the back end, in fact, I started hating cricket for that, uh, even though I'm a big <laughs> cricket fan. Um, so there are a lot of things which go at the back end in terms of engineering. Uh, and uh, without the open source, I don't think so, okay, we would be in a position to kind of manage this kind of complexity uh, in a proprietary software uh, because in a year we have like this, like uh, around 15, 20 days. I can't pay for the entire year, okay, with, in terms of uh, the uh, proprietary software for the entire year. 
because my customer stays only for this 20 days, okay, during this thing. So that is where open source plays a very big role in terms of uh, the Tata Play ecosystem and how we kind of deliver. So there is a lot of benchmarks where Hotstar claims that, okay, they have like 1.6 uh, crore concurrent sessions. Uh, but for us, uh, meaning it is even more because we are in a satellite broadcasting thing, okay, we reach around uh, um, 100 million users on these kind of match days. So that is the kind of volume that we look at and it is a big journey for us, okay, which open source is helping us in terms of meeting the customer goals. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to go through a bit of the pros. Why you decided that the open source strategy is the right approach? Maybe you can start following up a bit on what the cricket session or how you respond into peaks and why open source? Why you consider what are the positive things that you are using open source for? See, without open source, it becomes uh, difficult for us. See, first we need to kind of uh, get the right talent for these kind of tools. Um, getting a talent for a, a proprietary software is kind of tough. Uh, with more developers, okay, now off late uh, preferring, uh, meaning contributing to the open source community, it becomes a natural selection for us to kind of adopt this open source uh, so that we get the right talent. And uh, unless until the right talent comes in, no matter you have the best of technologies, okay, let's assume uh, we are deploying Kafka. Meaning if it is deployed by the right developer, it works. Uh, meaning uh, if it doesn't work, okay, you can't blame Kafka for that one. So it is the way in which, okay, you have deployed that software and there is a problem internally, okay. So that's where we kind of uh, go with some products, okay, which are like there is enough support and which helps us in terms of uh, delivering value to the customers. Perfect. Just to add to that, you know, um, yeah. um, so it's, it's a very critical part, right? You mentioned about talent available. Yeah. So every developer here today, you know, there's so much opportunity for you. If you go to developers.redad.com, you'll see the amount of content we have put together. You know, you can take your skills, up-level your skills, you can get certified, uh, and, and we invest a lot of money in that. The whole developer business unit uh, with the engineering side is uh, around 400, 450 people, and that's all of us working on products for developers. Uh, um, as uh, you saw earlier, you know, the, the slide which had all of the products within Red Hat and the upstream projects that are, we take those upstream projects. So the time and effort that you invest in learning those uh, pro products or projects or contributing or uh, maintaining or any, anything that you play there will add a lot to your skills uh, within, within this uh, sector. Um, and I think pr pretty much all of you agree, right? Like with 83 million developers working on open source projects, you know, your skills are a lot more transferable um, than, you know, proprietary uh, stack. Yeah, so add to that. Yeah, so in. So one of the things I love open source is open source. You know, the code is available to you. So the problem occurs, I look at the stack trace, I know exactly the line number where the problem has occurred. Mm -hmm. So in a kind of mission critical application we work in, we don't have the time to open a ticket, some engineer comes in, resolves a ticket, escalates, again one more ticket to close that ticket. If I go open source, the reason we selected open source technology is the code is available. If it breaks, I go exactly, I know where it has broken, we open the code, we check it out, and then we can move on. That's one of the very key things, you know, which uh, we want. And secondly, in the bank, we are trying to, like, say, developers, developer, we are building a generic platform for digital journey. So the bank is moving to a zero touch, zero paper kind of initiative, where multiple journeys will get built, left, right, center, lending journey, asset journeys. And we want to make sure that we give a developer a framework through which they can build their own journeys. The engineering team should not be a bottleneck. And we are trying to use a lot of open source technologies to provide resilience. So for example, we are 25 years old bank. So we have multiple systems which the digital system has to talk to. Some will break, some will work, some are SFTP APIs, sort of, they call it, you know, a file upload is an API, okay. So what we are trying to build is bring a centralized repository or centralized framework where everybody can hook it and plug in their journeys. And for that, we are using a lot of open source. You know, we are looking at a framework like Tempura, I don't know if you guys heard about it. It's an open source uh, resilience framework which we are seriously looking at. And we are also explaining Kafka to provide a sync mechanism. Because in our journeys, it's not a sync journey. Like supposing you apply for a loan, okay, and I ask you, give me your bank statement or give me your GST certificate. You may not have it handy or your, or, you know, your lawyer or your finance person have it. So the journey breaks. 
and then I upload my statement, the journey continues from where you left it. So there is a break, or what we call long running processes. All these things we are trying to innovate in the bank using open source. So traditionally, it was all paper based. You go to a branch, you apply, 10 days, but you will come to know, okay, what's my loan application? We want to cut out all that, you know, and make it very in 10 seconds loan, what we call 10 seconds journey. And for doing all that, we are trying to move more towards an open source stack. We are looking at Corcus as my cloud native framework. That's, that's my roadmap going forward because everything has to be on the cloud. That's the direction we have, you know, all cloud native applications. So we are seriously looking at Corcus as one of my open source framework. Kafka is a very key component in my ecosystem. So more or less, that's where, you know, that's where I think it's a very important part of the ecosystem. Thank you, Suvin. Kat Saran? If you see, most of the enterprise systems also uses the open source libraries. I see in one of the core uh, enterprise system, I open it. In their libraries are open source. 80% are open source. So only 20% they are uh, getting as a proprietary thing. We use more ELK more, actually. If you see the development, we need to think about the support system also. For example, uh, our transaction more than 85% are digital. So 24 hours, logs are coming. We need to segregate the log, we need to understand the customer problems. If you see the elastic sets that ELK stack and that kind of open source technology, I've not seen any enterprise grade competitor in the market. And we are getting that uh, fast update also. For example, alerting or AI based uh, bucketing and everything is available nowadays in the open source. So we, if we, more than the development, we will use in the support environment open source. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. Perfect. Uh, why, uh, why open source, right? Uh, like I'll just give an, uh, 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 like a comparison for that. Uh, proprietary products are something like an elephant where we take it very aggressively and then it's the king of it, like, and it moves very slow. And uh, yes, it does everything and it is the king there and nobody can uh, uh, cross the road what elephants are moving, right? But open source is like an ant's world where small, small components and different across the globe they come up and they integrate and make a big uh, uh, lay layout of it. Like, you know, like ants can build uh, uh, many things, like it can go anywhere and it's like that. So the comparison between an elephant and ant, it's like open source goes across. There is no barrier or there is no uh, 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 construct telling that, okay, this is the end of it. Like, it opens the brains across the world comes together and ensures that we are very fast. So in the current IT requirement, it's more of a speed. Speed is the, uh, uh, which makes a difference for any of the uh, uh, competitors or the enterprise world to be present. So if you are not coping up with the speed, we'll never be able to uh, achieve it. So to achieve speed, yes, open source is a way we can uh, uh, get into it. Perfect. You know, just, just to add uh, one thing to what uh, you all said, um, you know, I want to follow it by some numbers, right? If you take the Linux core kernel uh, stack, there are about 4,000, 4,600, I think, core contributors who uh, write and maintain uh, that kernel stack. And roughly 250 changes go in every single day. 22 million lines of code, um, you know, is written and maintained by, uh, by all of you and all of us. Uh, and 250 changes go in every single day. That's you know, six, uh, every six minutes there is a change, if you want to break it down. I know you all are pretty good at math here. Um, so, you know, that's the, that's the agility, right? You cannot get that from one single company, uh, you know, um, and that agility is what drives this whole open source thing um, so much, makes it so much better and drives it so much farther. Yeah, but because of that, I want to raise the third element that I want to go through, that is the challenges. I mean, we talk about people, we talk a lot about many projects, how do you keep the pace, how do you decide on what to invest and what not to invest. So there are a lot of challenges and I would like to hear, how do you handle those? Yeah, yeah. we can start with you, right. Suwin. Yeah, there are challenges like, you know, uh, RBI guidelines, we are governed body. So, you know, we need to make sure that any open source product is blessed by organization. Where, you know, in case of mission critical, we need to have some organization supporting us. So whenever I evaluate an open source product, I, at least the mission critical ones, the uh, frameworks ones, we make sure that there is a supporting organization or, you know, like Kafka. You know, we will go back with organization which supports Kafka or, you know, any cloud products. So that's one of the key challenges I have actually. 
on this one. The recent challenge was the log 4 j issue <laughs> that the bug created. The open source or enterprise everywhere that open source come on log 4 j was a vulnerability found. The fixing was the, one of the challenge we faced recently in the open source. So that's why I stress on that uh, commercial open sources compared yeah. to pure open source. The critical bugs or vulnerability or uh, some kind of issue comes, we require uh, support from uh, enterprise or uh, some kind of support mm -hmm. team. Yeah. That's a, that's a pretty interesting uh, comment you made there. Uh, and, and you're absolutely right, right? It depends on the appetite of the organization. You can go upstream, take the upstream project and then you know uh, you can start with it but then you will have to be make you you'll have to make sure that there are bodies and people within your organization who can support the upstream project right whether it's from a security perspective whether it's from a uh, pure supporting perspective or that's where your choice that you made the commercial open source software where you know they're contributing and making the upstream project better but at the same time they add the op open la they add the layer on top of it which says hey we are going to work on the security pits uh, for this version of the open source project right we are going to bring in the support for you um, and that's what makes it scalable and and you know um, but but at the end of the day it's not going to be completely proprietary right you'll still have access to the code base you can still get your people involved so it's a better together scenario in that yes. um, i agree that's the same strategy we are looking at actually yeah. and maybe the challenges what yeah. we face is like uh, we are an enterprise where we have to support the customers yes like you mentioned the vulnerability is one the other side of it like the uh, compliance governance right it could be a, a software co a compliance or it could be a sla achievable to the customer as a dependency like you mentioned yes we do have open source, but a supported version will always help us to get, achieve that governance from the yes. compliance perspective as well as security perspective, whatever even uh, Sharon also was mentioning, right? So we are able to achieve a mix and match of that with both uh, open source community edition as well as the supported version. Yeah. So uh, the cons of open source, this is a great question. Um, the reason is, um, see, people think that, okay, open source is cheap. Okay, open source is cheap only when you understand it. If you don't understand it, trust me, it is more expensive than any proprietary products. At least proprietary products, there is a partner okay, who will come and rescue you. Okay, here you are on your own. Okay, just to give you some examples, okay, we saw a great demo today morning okay, where he kind of deployed the code. Uh, one good thing that happened was okay, there was no requirements which are coming from the audience to him. So it was like a fixed demo okay, where it worked perfectly. But in reality, it doesn't happen like that. So when a developer is about to commit the code, okay, there are some business stakeholders okay, who will come and tell that, no, no, I don't want this shaking feature. I wanted that okay, only when you move up and down, okay, then only it should work like that. So when we put pressure on the developer, okay, it kind of creates a problem. And um, hence, okay, you need to kind of have the right people, right uh, tools to kind of manage this deployment. Otherwise, it is meaning you are creating problems for yourself. And the second thing is uh, getting people to understand what goes behind this open source and kind of knowing that meaning support will be a problem. Okay, uh, for instance, there can be a zero day vulnerability, okay, which would hit us any time. Uh, nobody can predict, okay, what is going to come. Uh, so we need to plan for these failures. Otherwise, uh, meaning you are in a bit of a problem where uh, you don't know, okay, how to solve the problem. Okay, you are dependent on some community and uh, people should understand the cons before they adopt any open source. Otherwise, it becomes a huge challenge and you will not be able to base the business stakeholders in terms of justifying yourself if any security breaches happen. So if I want to just add to that, it's an more of an attitude thing to use open source, you know. Uh -huh. You should have an attitude and the confidence, you know, if it breaks, at least my guys can look at the code, check it out and fix it, you know. Otherwise, we'll rely on a partner to help us. So that whole shift left or a whole attitude change has to happen at an organizational level. See, adopting open source in silo is one part. But the whole organization has to change the whole attitude of the developers. The mindset change is also required to adopt open source. That's how I look at it. And that's something which I am pushing internally in the bank to change attitude. Look at the code. Go and fix it. Don't call up somebody immediately. First, give it a shot. See the code, if the code is available, can you fix it? And then you would still have attitude, you know. Just log a support ticket, somebody will come and solve your problem. If you move to open source, we need to change that. 
Nobody will solve your problem. It is your problem. We need to fix it as a group. That mindset change is what I think we need to look at, actually. That's where I'm coming from. That's, that's, a, that's a great point both of you make, right? Like, uh, I think, I think um, bring, bringing in a top-level strategy where it is, you know, open source first strategy and embracing that and bringing that center of excellence within, within those companies, I think, I think that'll, that'll make a huge difference. Um, but for, for us within Red Hat, you know, we are, we are a little different because we, we develop software, um, you know, so for us the challenge is the problem of plenty. Those one million projects that are out there, we are looking at it and constantly evaluating on what are the projects that are resonating. Right? Where can we add a lot of value to our customers? Um, the, the, if you remember the stack that Burr walked us through from all the way, you know, from portal to, you know, the inner loop, the outer loop um, sort of uh, uh, tools, the CICD tools, um, and then coming all the way to observability. There are, there are a plethora of products uh, uh, that are there and projects uh, that are there. Uh, for us, the challenge is how do we prioritize, right? Where do we see big adoption rates going on with those projects. And, and one such uh, play, uh, project that we are currently evaluating is Backstage, uh, right? Uh, it's Backstage is all the rage. How many of you here have used Backstage or uh, from the internal portal perspective? Wow, I'm surprised, okay. Um, Backstage has been, um, you know, um, a lot of, uh, uh, has gained a lot of interest and, and uh, um, that's, that's one area where, you know, we didn't have a good onboarding solution for our customers. So we are looking at adopting Backstage and then trying to build on Backstage. And then there are other ones as well, right? On the observability side, you know, um, there are a plethora of products that we are trying to look at. Um, but, but yeah, the challenge again for us is how do we prioritize these upstream projects in a way that it can add value to our customers. Perfect. So I would like to close also this panel, uh, having a bit of understanding of what do you consider are the critical projects for the future? What do you consider is going to be uh, the role of open source in your organizations looking forward? So in last uh, three years, okay, we have kind of migrated uh, around uh, 25 projects okay, from proprietary to open source, okay. Um, so we started with uh, small, small uh, projects where we, okay, we were testing the waters. And we are in a stage where we have moved as critical as a billing application, okay, which is from a very established OEM, where we have migrated that entire thing to a, a open source based project, okay, in a microservice based uh, architecture. It was not like a, a small exercise, okay. Uh, it took us close to uh, two to three years for us to do this uh, migration. Uh, Meaning luckily, uh, meaning we came out of this project in a successful manner because the chances of failure of these kind of projects are very high because you migrating a core, it is like a banking system, okay, moving their core banking to a open source. Um, so uh, since the chances of failures are there, okay, you need to plan for those uh, uh, failures. Um, and uh, since I represent, okay, Tata Group, okay, we believe in giving back to the community. Um, that is there in our genes, so, okay, so what are open source projects that we kind of adopt, uh, we kind of contribute back to the community so that uh, what our fixers, our developers all uh, bring to the, uh, or put in our ecosystem actually gets committed to the public ecosystem. And in fact, we also reward those kind of uh, things while it is not expected uh, as, okay, to kind of rank these developers and kind of uh, reward them. Uh, but since it is something over and above the duty that they are uh, doing, so we kind of have a hall of fame where we recognize these uh, developers, okay, from our partner communities, uh, so that we kind of keep this ecosystem vibrant. Okay, if nobody comes into this ecosystem, then kind of uh, these projects kind of die down. So that is uh, one of the key things, okay, where when we take any open source project, we kind of master that open source project and we kind of contribute back so that we are also part of that cycle. So that's how we keep, and then the journey has just started for us uh, until we kind of migrate most of our applications to open source. And now that you mentioned, Sadri, I would like also to give some key takeaways that you consider also for the audience yeah. when you... Uh, see, one of the key takeaways is please choose the right product. Okay, there are, uh, meaning there is like one million uh, projects, okay, I don't know, meaning how many of those projects, okay, would be available in next three years. Uh, there might be like two million projects, okay, but out of this one million, there might be like, uh, meaning 900K might be not relevant. 
So it's a very fast evolving thing. So unless until you keep yourself uh, up to speed in terms of, okay, what is the trend, okay, which is going in the market, uh, please kind of upskill yourself, okay, to those kind of things. Uh, meaning, trust me, okay, as of now, uh, meaning the uh, market for developers is very, very hot, okay, and especially in India. And you guys are more uh, relevant for organizations than people like CFOs or CMOs. Because you make a very big change, okay, for the organizations that you guys contribute to. And since every company is kind of trying to adopt, uh, meaning are making more technology-oriented solutions, uh, meaning the role of developers is like paramount uh, these days. So just keep yourself okay, open for new uh, things and don't, uh, meaning try to unlearn things, okay? Uh, meaning if you know a particular project or a particular open source uh, and you feel that, okay, it is not going, meaning try to leave it. Okay, don't try to stick with it and try to build more on top of it, uh, meaning then you become a technical debt, okay, which actually creates problem, okay, in the future. So try to be agile in terms of just how the softwares move your code. So you should also be able to move your technologies, uh, meaning how they kind of uh, evolve. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yeah. Please zoom in. Yeah, sure. So as a bank, we are moving to shift left. And, you know, we have just started the journey of adapting open source. Earlier, it was more of commercial products which we were evaluating. And you rightly said, in open source, the key takeaway is selecting the right product or the right framework. Because there are a lot of fly-by-night kind of uh, framework which come and they vanish. So, and we need to have a long-term strategy. Look at the dev community. Look at who has contributed. What's the background of developer? That's what I do when I look at an open source project. I do a background check on the key developers so that at least I know there is stability in the source program, at least for one or two years. Because the kind of cycle we have in our bank, it is at least six months for something to go live. So I don't want to start a project today and after six months that open source project doesn't exist or you know, there is no developer support for that. So one of the key takeaways, which at least I push for is, look at the frameworks and make sure there's a long-term strategy for those frameworks actually. Perfect. Saran? If you see that uh, end of life problem that is in, uh, you told, uh, that is in the enterprise segment also, proprietary things also, in the open source also almost same. Enterprise is more now because open source is more matured and more powerful, that's why enterprise also shopping their product. We got into the same problem, we are moving to open source because of that. They will declare end of life, so we have to move to open source. We don't have any other option sometimes. Yeah. So we are focusing more on open source in next few years now. Perfect. And then Kiran. Okay. Uh, for us, like open source has been a big push from the management. Also from the internal IT, we have taken a strategy that we need to adopt. Uh, it's as simple as that. The DevOps uh, uh, has been there for some time now, and it's an integration of both developer as well as an operations. If you go back a few years back, uh, IT operations used to have a skilled set of uh, admins and also the DBAs who never knew anything about the coding. Because I come from both the side, right? I have a, a coding experience as, a, as well as an admin. So now it is a, a amalgamation of both. It's a merger of dev development as well as ops. So yes, definitely yes, open source is a, a, a way forward for the DevOps team. Uh, if you concentrate on uh, open source, yes, you'll have the opportunities. Like uh, uh, Shisha, they also mentioned, and uh, Zubin mentioned, like there's a huge opportunity and right set of choosing will make a big difference. And if you choose the right product, doesn't mean that you have to leave. And because it's one million uh, uh, products, right? You can cut across any products there. That's not a problem. The opportunity is very high. And strategically, we have already uh, taken a decision to move towards open source and implement internally, be it a community or be it a supported version, and then take it to the, uh, our customers so that uh, that helps them, both commercially as well as uh, strategically for their uh, deployment as well. Perfect. Any right. final considerations, Mithun? Yeah, as you know, as closing points, I would say from a developer perspective, Brooke, uh, every one of them said like, hey, scale fast or fail fast, right? They're of the one million projects, look at it, pick it up, uh, um, play with it, and if, if, if you see value in it and you can start implementing it, then, you know, scale, scale it fast. Um, otherwise, you know, no, no problem, right? Don't try to force fit it. You can, you can always fail fast, move to the next one. Um, and from you as developers here, um, 
definitely contribute back to the projects, right? And and uh, looks like you have a great uh, um, sort of internal framework. I think HDFC, all of you have internal frameworks where you know, developers are empowered and recognized uh, for their contributions upstream. Um, and this is how you build your persona. This is how you build your profile uh, out in the market, right? So make sure that your portfolio um, is, you know, filled with those contributions so that you are as much a part in the success of that project as anybody else. And that's the beauty of open source, right? It's democratized innovation. Um, and that's what we are all here for. So with that, I want to thank you all the panelists. Please, if we can give a token of appreciation to them, okay? And also, I would like to, because they are not going to stay here until the end of the day, so if you have any question or you want to ask any particular project or something, uh, feel free to raise your hand and we can go through that. And if not, we are set to go. Also, Bar is here in case you have any particular question or want to know about any particular project. In Any question from the audience? When you work for the open port project, like everything, if you did not go in the depth, you did not touch the problem. You just know this thing is there. I can get some detail. But when you go in the depth, then only you are providing the solution. Then in your conversion, you say that it is not good to go for the depth. Could you elaborate more? What do you mean? Sir, it is not good to go with uh, depth. So oh. his point was, uh, no. you said like, hey, if there are any, if I'm paraphrasing your question, um, you, you, you sort of mentioned that, hey, if there are, if, you know, start uh, evaluating some projects, but you know, if you think it's not the right fit, don't go too deep into it, move on, because yeah. there, are, there are a million projects out there that you can select. So he wanted to understand where's the fine line between going in, de in yeah. depth and yeah. evaluating well, a project versus, you, you know, you moving to another yeah. project because you're not fully sure. Yeah, great question. Thanks for that question. See, there are two parts to this thing, okay. Uh, there is something called technical depth, okay, DBT, okay, which is like, okay, you kind of adopt uh, uh, solutions, okay, but assume that, okay, it is uh, not evolving. When I mean evolving, okay, you're not getting proper security patches, then you're stuck with that. Okay, when a zero-day vulnerability hit, okay, be it, okay, it might be a non-dependent thing like the log4j vulnerability which hit most of the uh, projects. So in that thing, okay, getting a patch for that particular solution or part that particular uh, software that you have deployed, okay, can be a challenge. Okay, and at that time, okay, you can't force your developer to kind of uh, uh, patch that thing, okay, to fix that vulnerability, it becomes like a, a huge thing, okay. So just, uh, we need to ensure that, okay, there is a kind of uh, right community base, okay, for this thing. And uh, at least there should be some kind of updates which has to come at least uh, every quarter. Uh, so you, the moment you see that, okay, it is kind of getting delayed or uh, meaning the last quarter patch is getting delayed to the subsequent quarter, then these are like warning signs for you. Where you need to figure out that, okay, why is this community not uh, completely working? Uh, meaning what is going wrong here, okay, like that we need to constantly be in touch and you should also at the same time marry your business requirements. So if your business requirement kind of changes, uh, which requires like different kind of solution, then that is also a kind of uh, a checkpoint for you to decide, okay, should I continue with this stream or should I just pivot and change it to a different stream. So it is a function of both business plus the kind of technical roadmap, okay, which is going on and uh, at the end of the day, you are in the driver's seat. So you decide, okay, when to kind of shift gears and change the direction, okay? And uh, meaning you should also own the responsibility, okay, if something happens. So as long as you have that ownership, I think things will go fine. So I think just to add, fail fast should be the mantra, yeah. you know, the way I look at it. And yeah. you have to move towards an agile kind of adoption. Only then the adoption will be faster and better, actually. Indeed. Maybe one more point is like, uh, if you're looking at training or, uh, I mean, uh, reskilling or upskilling your skill set, right? Then there's no limit. You can go uh, any depth. But when it comes to business, like Shashadra was mentioning, then you need to be cautious and then take a call there. Uh, I have one question, right? Uh, recently, mainly for the banking kind of apps, uh, Android apps, right? Like a Sova, it's a Trojan uh, recently has been uh, attacked for apps, mobile apps. Okay, that is mainly because using this open source, uh, right? Because many people know what exactly is happening from an open source market, right, like a framework and all. Uh, to get that out, right, like what, uh, what is the best security mechanism, right, like uh, this Red Hat provides, uh, Mithun, uh, right, like you can put some uh, points over here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so if I may paraphrase your question again, 
Um, your question was, hey, uh, open source projects, um, you know, they're, are they a little more vulnerable because uh, the, the code base is more open and a lot of people know about it. So how do you stay a little ahead of it? Is that, is that uh, right? Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's an interesting and a good question, right? So the good part is it is open um, and everybody uh, can, can innovate and invent on that. Um, the better part I'd say is, you know, um, like every other project, right? Like no matter how, if you go down the proprietary lane, um, the proprietary stack, path, you know, there are always vulnerabilities there as well, right? On, on this case, you have a lot more people, a lot more companies, a lot more projects focused around, you know, uh, looking at it, right? It's not just the bad people, but also the good people are looking at it. The 83 million developers, they're also looking at it, right? That's why when Log4j was uh, out, um, I think um, uh, uh, Sysdig was one of the first companies uh, to roll out, uh, 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 you know, a zero-day vulnerability patch, um, and that got, uh, that, and they contributed back uh, upstream uh, to the project and and you know they were able to they were able to curb it, uh, you know, before a lot more damage was done. Um, and and so so the point I'm making is, look, even even in there, there's always going to be a case where you know bad people are a tad bit smarter, but then the response time will be, uh, you know, you have you have more companies looking at it, more companies contributing, so you know your chance of nipping it at the bud would be much higher. Um, so there's there's definitely advantages there, and with the current CI/CD platforms that are going on, you know, um, they're they're also they scan for open source uh, projects that are being used. They look at you know um, we have something called as Red Hat Dependency Analytics. We look at um, and we partner with Sneak on that, right? So the vulnerabilities we always keep an eye. We always keep those vulnerabilities up to date. So. At the time, um, you know, at, at code, uh, when you're writing code and when you uh, push it, uh, when you push it, it, it already scans, it tells you, hey, so you're using this project, you're using this project, here are the vulnerabilities that we found, um, you know, are you addressing that or not? If not, it's going to show you that these vulnerabilities are not there. And if you haven't checked out, it's uh, uh, Red Hat Dependency Analytics. It's a free pro uh, product uh, from us. Um, take a look at it, give it a spin, um, you know, that's just one of um, the many solutions that are available out there in the market. DevSecOps, yes, indeed. Uh, that, that was my point, right? So, uh, so there is the DevSecOps, uh, DevSec and SecOps and DevSecOps. Um, so that, that, and there, there are many products that are coming in there as well and projects. Um, so yeah, that, that should become part of your internal uh, development life cycle. Um, and, and you know, so you'll, you'll be able to catch, catch most of those vulnerabilities there. And there's always going to be, look, I'm never going to say that you'll never, ever have zero-day vulnerabilities. Um, it's always the, the thief and the cop yeah. uh, game that you've got to keep playing. Saran, you were going uh, to if say... If you see the OS market, vulnerabilities are coming on proprietary OS more than open source, that everybody knows. Uh, second one, uh, specific to your question, uh, there, uh, like antivirus, there are uh, security SDKs are available. That is may not be open source because we need to pay because like antivirus uh, signature, it, it, every month or every day it is updating the signature. We need to pay for the signature. And we can use that to prevent the malwares because uh, we are not updated each time with the malware, which malware is available after getting a mail only or news only we will come to know. So like antivirus, you will get a SDK to protect your mobile app. We are using that. Yeah, that's where, you know, your companies like Sneak, um, companies like Sysdig, uh, um, you know, all of these products are a lot there. So in our points. bank, we are building an entire DevSecOps pipeline. Yeah. And we are moving to a shift left. So the moment a container comes into the ecosystem, it doesn't get deployed automatically. It goes to a checks and balances. And if the checks and balances fail, we reject the container. So, and, you know, the entire pipeline has, so the whole thought process has to change, you know, we need to move from just dumping a jar file into a container into building the whole automated pipeline with the Dave Secops as a first step in that, actually. A couple of more points is like, uh, I mean, adding to the Dev Secops, we have modularity there, right? So, it gets arrested there. And also, you can go into micro-segmentation, which definitely will help you to uh, isolate the problems and then take care of the things quickly, I mean, with the speed. We want to continue with the conversation. Feel free. Again, if we can give to them yeah, a token of appreciation, that would be great. And again, a round of applause to all of them. Perfect. And then we are going to go back to the...